Hello, this is Jacob Avila of 5 Minute Sono, and today we're going to talk about something that I actually get asked about a lot, and that is how do you get that perfect cardiac window? So to start with, the probe you're going to want to use is the phase ray transducer. This has actually been called the cardiac transducer, so it would make sense that you want to use that for the heart. So there's four main views that we can do. It's a perishable long and short axis, a sub-xiphoid in the apical four chamber. So this is how you get those four views. We got our sub xiphoid over here, personal long, personal short, and then the apical four chamber, which this one's actually my favorite one right here. Now I have to pause here and talk about the probe marker. Now if you notice on these images with the apical four chamber view, that probe marker is facing over towards the patient's right. This is a personal long axis view, and the probe marker here is facing over towards the patient's left hip, personal short. It's going to be rotated 90 degrees the other direction. Now this might be how you need to do things at your institution, or everything might be 180 degrees reversed, and that just very varies on how you have your machine set up. So for most applications of ultrasound in the emergency department, you're going to see this probe marker over on the left side of the screen. So this is what I had in residency. And if you have your probe marker on the left side of the screen, then on an April 4 chamber, your probe marker is going to go towards the right. Your personal long axis view your probe marker is going to go to the left hip. But if you have it set up like cardiologists do over here, that probe marker is going to be on the opposite side. Now, notice you want the image to look the same. So, to get this image to look like this image, you just have your probe marker basically flipped 180 degrees. So, if you have your machine at your home institution set up for cardiology settings, that probe marker on an apical four chamber is going to go towards the patient's left. That personal long axis view, the probe marker is going to go towards the right shoulder. So there's a couple of general things you can do without actually manipulating the probe too much to make your view better. The big one that I always do is put more jelly. I'm pretty liberal with my jelly that I put on because sometimes that's really the difference. Also pressure, you got to get that probe to go in between the ribs sometimes, actually most of the time. When I'm done with my examination, often they're going to have little red marks where the probe was, and that's perfectly okay because sometimes that's the only way that you're going to get those views that you need. Now, when you're looking initially, you got to do this kind of circular pattern, kind of a circle survey, and I'll explain that when I get to the actual scans in a bit. And you can also put your patient to the left lateral decubitus, and that's thought to actually bring the heart a little closer to the anterior chest wall. Sometimes when I have a patient that I know they're going to be very difficult to scan, I will just stick them over in the left lateral decubitus before even starting. But sometimes you can get away with it. You have have them supine, you try to find it, then if you don't, then you can turn them over onto the left side. So the only one this won't work for is for the sub xiphoid, but for the parasternal and the apical views, putting them on the left side will make your image better most of the time. So now let's talk about actually putting the probe on the patient. So we're going to start with my favorite view, that's the apical four chamber view. You're going to grab the probe and a sort of pencil grip here. And I don't have a really good landmark other than the nipple and the intermammary fold in females. So um, you find the nipple on male, stick it right underneath there. Sometimes, uh, you know, patients have a little more uh, fluffiness, I guess. Um, and you have to put in the intermammary fold on those guys too. And then females, intermammary fold. And I just kind of stick it there and move around till I find some that I recognize. So that's what I'm doing right there. And I found my heart right there. Now, notice before right here, I wasn't getting a super clear image. It was fuzzy. I mean, I knew what it was, but it was a little fuzzy. And so basically, I just from here went to a different area. So I went a little more lateral on him. And going lateral, I was able to find that image that I wanted. And that brings up an important point. Now, the point that I want to bring up is that if you're in a certain window and that particular area doesn't work very well, you can just move your probe, move it lateral, move it medial. Because remember, your heart's sitting up here somewhere, right? And you just want to find that window where that ultrasound beam is making it to the heart in an orientation that you want. Sometimes that's a little more medial, sometimes it's a little more lateral. So just kind of experiment. Look around. If you don't like your window, just try a different spot. So when you actually get a view where you're actually able to see the heart, what you want is you want this septum, this hyperechoic line right here, to be straight up and down, to be vertical. So the way that you do that, if your septum is a little bit over to one side, is you're going to swing that probe. You're going to swing it left or right. And here I'm going to show you how that can change the image. Right here we're a little bit sideways. And we just swing the probe over and then suddenly we have that septum nice and up and down right like that just in a vertical orientation just like we want it another thing too is you can angle the probe a little too deep or a little too superficial now if you angle a little bit too deep so if you have the tail too far up you're going to get this view of the ventricles here and you sometimes that's what you want but to get that classic apical four chamber view you need to actually see the four chambers and if you see an image where you see mostly ventricles you usually just need to flatten your tail relative to the patient which brings the beam a little more anterior so right there, we start to see those four chambers. So you go from your beam being a little too deep to going a little more superficial, and suddenly the atria pop into view. Another thing too is you can be a little too superficial with your beam, so your tail might be a little too low. So see right here, I actually have a kind of a weird apical five chamber. I have the right side of the heart over here, the left side of the heart over here, and then this is the quotes fifth chamber. This is the aortic valve going into the aorta. And if you see that aortic valve, you just need to bring your 
ultrasound beam a little deeper, put your probe tail a little more superior, it'll open up just like that. So that's the view that you want. You don't want to get that fifth chamber view that we're seeing. You want to get that four chamber view right there. So let's move on to the perishable long axis view. Now I mentioned it a little bit when I was doing the introduction, but when I'm placing the probe on the patient, there's no set landmark that I go for. Usually I just stick it where I think it should be. And it just will do these kind of circles until I find the image that I want. So let's stick it on the patient and just do these circles. And then right about there, you do a little tweaking, and then you find that, that view that you want, that nice personal long axis view. Now, here's a personal long axis view. Now, I'm definitely seeing the heart. I'm seeing the left atrium, the mitral valve, left ventricle, aortic outflow tract here, and then the right ventricle outflow tract over here. But you really need that ventricle to be a lot more perpendicular to the beam itself. And if you get that, if you get the apex being a little kind of tilted up this way, that means that your probe is a little too close to the apex uh, relative to the patient, of course. So what, the way that you want to fix that is you actually just want to bring your probe up a couple of rib spaces and that left ventricle should kind of flatten out over here. So you see here, I'm going to go up a couple of rib spaces and then right there it flattens out a little more and looks a little more like a classic personal long axis view. One thing that can happen when you're looking for the personal long axis view is you can be a little oblique. So you get a view that looks something like that. And if you get a weird oblique view, you're not seeing the full chamber, what you do is you actually just rotate the probe. So you can see I'm these little rotations over here. So rotate and it'll open up that left ventricle. So another pitfall is slicing the ventricle in an oblique orientation. This is a clip I was able to get from ultrasound of the week. And you can see that over here, it seems like the walls are completely touching, but what's going on is you're actually slicing the ventricle on the side here. So you're not getting it right in the middle. What you need to do is you need to make sure you move that probe side to side, kind of like this. So you move it side to side until you get the biggest chamber size you can get. And that's how you know you're in the center of the ventricle and not off to the side. Next, we're going to talk about the sub xiphoid orientation. So when you're doing the sub xiphoid view, one of the more important things is how you actually grab the probe. You want to grab it in an overhead orientation right here. And you want to put your finger basically right on top of the probe head. Now you find the patient's xiphoid, which is right around here. And you stick that probe right underneath that xiphoid. Remember the heart's sitting over here and you have to get this ultrasound beam, this one millimeter slice of ultrasound beam to that area. And to do that, you're going to actually have to push the whole probe head down into the patient's abdomen like we're seeing here. Basically, you're going to flatten the probe out to get that view. Now, once you're in the right area, if you want to improve your views, there's a couple things you can do. One of the things is you can go over towards the patient's right just to tad and then angle it up. Sometimes that makes it so the ultrasound beam slices through the liver a little bit better and the liver is a decent acoustic window. The other thing you can do is you can have the patient take a big breath. So I don't know if you notice it, but right here, the patient is going to take a big breath and that heart is actually going to come a little closer to the, the probe. You see right here, he takes a big breath and that heart comes a little bit closer. So I didn't talk too much about the perishable short axis view, just because as far as basic ultrasound, there's not a whole lot you can get from that. The one thing you can get is you can look for right heart train, maybe look for that septal bowing, but you can typically see that with other views. And I just see people kind of struggle with it. Now, the one tip that I could give for a perishable short axis view is that if you ever get a perishable short axis view and get lost, go back to the perishable long and then make sure that your probe is centered right over the mitral valve and then rotate 90 degrees clockwise off of that mitral valve. That's often what I've used to help myself when I struggle with this view. Now, when you sit down and actually do these scans, do the perishable long short, the apical and the sub xiphoid view, I know there's a lot of tricks you know if the septum is one way you gotta swing the tail this way if your ventricle is pointing a little too close to the probe you want to bring your probe a little more superior on the chest wall now all that stuff is good but if you ever kind of run into issues just troubleshoot what i do often is i'll just put the probe on the patient if i don't get the view that i want i'm often not thinking i'll just rotate a little bit and see if that works if that doesn't work i'll rock the probe a little bit and if that doesn't work then i'll try a different rib space so you basically just need to troubleshoot and realize that you just need to get that ultrasound beam to that heart somehow and sometimes it just takes a little bit of troubleshooting a little bit of manipulating with that probe to get that view that you need that's it for this week's five minutes sono please feel free to email me or send me a tweet if you have any questions or comments and don't forget to subscribe go to blog5 slash subscribe put your name and your email address in those little boxes there and never miss another video and if looking on web browsers isn't your thing you can always subscribe to my website through podcasting you can go to itunes or whatever podcasting service you use for your android and hit subscribe